Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about one of the containers from our standard library, and that's going to be StoodArray. So there, there are often times inside of our programs where we want to group our values maybe into the same variable. So for example, we may be collecting data over time, maybe it's something like temperatures. Um, and we really don't want to have to create, say, a unique variable for every single measurement. So for example, you know, if we're collecting, you know, temperatures over the course of the year, we really don't want to have 365 different, say, floating point numbers or double precision numbers for those temperatures. We'd ideally like to collect them together into, you know, say, a single variable that we could access individual components of. And that's exactly what we can do with some of our containers from the standard library. So specifically today, we're going to be looking at this container called StudArray. And this array is just a container that encapsulates fixed size arrays. So we want, say, in elements um, stored in you know, this one container here. Right? It's fixed size, so we have to specify the number of elements. And it can store elements of some particular type T, right? So we can store, say, 100 integers, right? Or you know, 75 floats or 22 doubles, right? Um, we just have to specify what type that we want to store and how many of that type we want to store in this array. And then we can access the contents of just that single array instead of, say, having 75 unique variables for all those individual pieces of data. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can use this std array. And of course, we can start off with creating a new source file. So we'll create something like array.cpp. And inside of here, we can, of course, start with creating a main function right, the core of all of our C++ programs. So before we can go ahead and use std array, we're going to need to include its definition, right, for the same reason why we needed to include IOStream. Before we can use std array, we have to include its definition from this header array. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go ahead and go back to the top of our file, and we'll include this header array. Um, and we'll go ahead and include IOStream while we're at it so we can print out the contents of our array later on. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how we can create a std array inside of our program. Now, fundament fundamentally, this array is really just another type. So we can create, in a, vari uh, we can create a variable that's a std array. Now, there's one little catch here, right? It makes it different than some of the fundamental types that we've looked at in the past. Um, and that's that a std array is really a template which really means it's not a concrete thing, right? A std array is really just a template for whatever kind of array we want. So our std array takes some, you know, template parameter, t, that says what type we want to store in this array and how many elements of that type, right, n, right? It's a fixed size array, so we also need to specify, you know, what, you know, the number of elements we're storing in this array. So really there's an infinite t number of, you know, std arrays that we could have, right? We could have, you know, std array of, you know, 22 floating point numbers or 93 integers um, or, you know, 67, uh, you know, floating point, uh, double precision floating point numbers, right? Um, or some other kind of object here, right? Because std array is fundamentally just a template. It's a template for this array container. So in this case, right, we have to provide some template parameters here to say what type we mean to store and how many elements of that type. So we'll go ahead and create a new variable that's a std array, and we can provide these template uh, parameters inside of these uh, open and close angle brackets or less than greater than signs. So in this case, we'll provide both a type and a number of elements. Um, and we'll ca call our array something like my array. So what are we saying in this line? Well, we're just saying, hey, I wanna create a std array of three integers, and I'm going to call that array my array right here. But again, right, we could change this to something else, right? It's a template, so we could change the type or we could change the number of elements as well, right? Both of these things are valid because fundamentally, std array is just a template. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this back. We'll have our array of three integers here. Now, right now we've just defined this variable here. But like we said in our video on variables, we also often like to perform some initialization, right? We wanna prevent the use of uninitialized variables. So we can do initialization on the same line as we define our variable, and we can do it through this thing called aggregate initialization, right? So I'll go ahead and provide uh, a link to this std array reference uh, at the, you know, below the video. So you can find this documentation for yourself 
But at its core, you can see that we can initialize our array using this thing called aggregate initialization. So we can say set our array equal to, inside of curly brackets, some values that we want to have as the contents of our array. So here we'll say set the contents equal to 45, you know, maybe 23, and then you know, maybe three. Right, so now our three elements inside of our my array are going to be set to 45, 23, and three respectively. So we've initialized our array now. And in fact, you know, if you look up the rules of this aggregate initialization, we can even get rid of this equal sign if we wanted to. But both of these things work perfectly fine. Okay, so now we've created our std array. We've set it equal to some values. Let's go ahead and try to print it out. So the first thing we can try to do is just std c out with our my array, right? And then print a new line character, right? And we can try to see if this works. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. And then we'll try to compile array.cpp and create an executable called array. And let's see what happens. Well, we get a whole bunch of errors. So you know, we can try to scroll up to the top to find where these errors start um, at the very beginning and try to understand it at least at its very basics. So one of the unfortunate things when we start working with things like templates is that the errors can get quite messy. So it can be a little dip a little difficult to see what's going on. But fundamentally, let's see what's going on here. So fundamentally, our compiler is complaining that there's no match for this operator, less than less than, um, when we're using this basic O stream of characters, which is our std cout, um, and then this std array of integers, um, of three integers, which is our my array. So what is, this, what is this really saying right here? All it's really saying is that our my array doesn't implement this operator. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. So like as, as we've talked about in the past, our types, right? You know, these user-defined types or these standard library types, um, they can implement uh, different operators, right? So std cout implements this less than less than operator and it uses it for printing, but our std array doesn't implement this operator. So we can't print the contents directly like this. Um, however, we can still print the underlying values inside of our programs. Uh, or rather inside of our array. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that, how we can access the contents of this array so we can actually print something and use something. So we'll go ahead and open up this file again, array.cpp, and we'll try something different. So if we go ahead and scroll down on std array, you can see that our std array supports a number of different, say, methods and operators, including a number for element access. So it uses things like uh, or provides things like at, so this is how we can access specified elements, and it even does some balance checking. So this is useful if we wanna be careful inside of our program and make sure we're not reaching out of bounds. So for example, our array only has three elements here, but what if we try to access you know, element number four? Um, so we use at to be extra careful about those situations. We can also just have um, you know, a less safe access, right? So we can use this operate this bracket operator to just index into our array at a particular point without doing any kind of bounds checking. We also have methods for say doing, uh, accessing the first element. So that's front right here, the last element using back and even the underlying memory using this data method. So let's go ahead and try some of these out. So for example, you know, we can try at so we can use dot at to access a member of our std array. So this dot is just a member access operator. So we're accessing the member at of our std array, my array. So you want to access the value at say position zero. So our arrays in many of our containers are zero indexed, meaning that our first element is stored at index zero, our second element is stored at index one and so on and so forth. So here we can go ahead and save this and we can try to recompile our program and we can run it. And you can see that we get the first element inside of our std array, right? The element 45 here. Likewise, we can use that bracket operator that um, our documentation says is supported. So we can try to access say the zero or maybe element one inside of our array. So we can go ahead and recompile and try to run this. And you can see that we get, of course, the second element, right? 23. Now we can also use, say, those methods front and back. So we can use, say, dash um, front 
to get the first element inside of our array. And we'll go ahead and copy this again. And we'll say try to print the last element as well using that method back, right? So front and back just accesses the first element and last element respectively. So we'll go ahead and save this and we'll go ahead and compile array.cpp again. We've got our executable. Let's go ahead and run it. And you can see we get the first and last element, 45 and 3 respectively. Okay. Now, another thing we can do here is you can see there's some operations and one of them is fill. So we can fill our array with a specified piece of data. So for example, maybe we want to change the data inside of this array, right? So we can do it one by one by just say doing, you know, my array of zero is now equal to 10, right? We're just accessing the element at position zero and setting it equal to some other value. Um, so, you know, we can go ahead and save this and compile it and run it. And you can see that we've changed the you know front, the first element to 10 now. But if we want to change, say, all of the elements, maybe we want to fill our array with a specified piece of data. So maybe we want to fill our array with the value 54, right? So we'll go ahead and save this. And now when we compile and run our program, we see both front and back are 54. And even our middle element is going to be 54, right? Fill allows us to you know, fill our container with the specified value, um, our std array, that is, right? Fill our std array with that specified value. Okay, so the last thing we can you know, go ahead and look at is going to be this, uh, um, this capacity, right, query that we can do. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these prints. And we can go ahead and call this method from our capacity called size, right? So let's go ahead and print out my array dot size. Now we know array is three elements here. And if we go ahead and print out my array dot size, right, using that method and run it, you can see that it knows that we have three elements here. Now, while this may seem pretty trivial, you know, in the context of this program, this is actually a very useful thing as compared with the old kind of C style arrays that, um, you know, some people are familiar with working with, um, which are still valid in C++, but somewhat discouraged um, compared to using a you know, standard container like std array. Now, the reason why this is so nice is because it doesn't, it means that we don't have to keep track of this number three elsewhere inside of our program. And in fact, uh, we can be a bit more expressive here in how we're writing our code, right? Instead of say, having this number three stored as a separate variable that we have to keep around. So we know how many elements we have in my array. My array just knows how many elements it contains. Right? My array knows its size, right? So if we update, you know, say this template someplace and, you know, we make it say five elements instead of three. So, you know, we'll just maybe fill in some more dummy values here and we recompile this. My array still knows its size, right? It knows it contains five elements. So this is a very nice thing about our containers, right? Um, our containers suddenly, they, they know a lot more about themselves in terms of, you know, how many elements they contain. So it can help simplify our code and make our code a bit more expressive, right? Instead of, you know, writing these values like five or 10, right? We can just query the size of this container, right? Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. We looked at some of the basics of using this container stood array. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed here was that there's a lot more, um, say methods here that we didn't really touch on, um, including this entire category of things called iterators. Now these iterators are mainly used when we're working with loops and our data structures. And also when we're using say our STL algorithms. So we'll be touching more about iterators when we get into the topics of loops um, and algorithms in later videos. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. As always, you can find any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.